This morning I'm on a deck uh, at the back of our property on one of the buildings that overlooks the neighborhood. You can hear the sprinklers going off. It's that uh, beautiful time of the year. Cool, crisp, early morning air, but it's still warm enough to be outside in short sleeves. Earlier this morning I was preparing a message that I'm going to deliver today uh, to one of the churches here in Medford where their pastor found himself in the hospital. So uh, he's a good friend I wanted to help out and he asked me to preach for him this morning. I'm in Mark chapter 4 where Jesus and the disciples are in the middle of the night on the Sea of Galilee and there's a storm, the waves have come into the boat, the boat's going to sink. Jesus is asleep on the back of the boat with a pillow under his head. The disciples shake him up, say, don't you care about us? Jesus gets up and rebukes the storm. It calms down and everybody's happy, lives a great life. But to get to that calm was an interesting process. The, the calm there, by the way, is a, is a Greek word that means still and calm. Yes, obviously that. But it's also translated cheerfulness. And I got to thinking, how in the world could that be cheerful? And I reviewed my own life and some life-threatening circumstances that I've been in that have uh, I survived. At the end of that, all that adrenal fluid and nervousness of am I going to live was released and it came out in nervous laughter. So it makes all kinds of sense that calm could be a cheerful place where a lot of laughter happens because moments before it was a frothing ocean, if you will, and now it's just calm. Jesus produced that calm by doing two things. The text in, in Mark says this. He he rebuked the wind and spoke to the waves. The rebuke there is a word that means he identified the source and the speaking to the waves was a command. So he rebuked the source and commanded the byproduct, the cause and effect. And our world, our culture is waiting for the church to move that way beyond just waves and dealing with waves of culture and waves of personal lives, but go to the root issue, the wind. And as a result of that, these calms come and the disciples at the end of that story said who is this they were amazed at this supernatural god who could sleep through storms yet command those storms to end and that's what god has given the church as an assignment in our culture to go to the root causes of these issues that we uh, see in our world and to deal with them instead of spending our time on the waves buying bigger life preservers and boats god wants us to go to the source so that when the calm comes the culture says who is this God that you serve? And then at that point we can answer their question.